Yo, what's up guys? Today we'll talk about your portfolio and uh, I'm gonna give you a few tips um, that will help you understand what you need to build for your portfolio because your portfolio is gonna be your key to that first developer job to making six figures to be working remotely, okay? So let's get into it, let's not waste any time. One thing that I wanna tell you is that your portfolio has two purposes. One, to prove that you know how to do the job that you are supposed to be doing, okay? And then the second one is for you to learn stuff, okay? Your portfolio is not made for you to show after you've learned some concept or some technology or whatever. Your portfolio is made for you to be learning on, if that makes sense, okay? So a portfolio is not a website, okay? It used to be like, at least in my opinion, like whenever I started programming years ago, everyone had like a website and now still people have websites with a bunch of applications and whatever. That kind of sounds like a portfolio, but in the most technical way, the way I see things, at least, a portfolio is just proof that you can do the job. So it can also be, just a PDF, which is like your resume and the link to a working application and the link to a GitHub repo. That's all it has to be. It doesn't necessarily have to be a website with like calculator to do app, weather app or whatever other things people are, build, are building, okay? You don't need to have all of those things. To have like a proper portfolio, as I said, in my opinion of being a developer, of doing this for myself when I first started learning programming and when I got my first dev job and while working with people as well, helping them get uh, high paying programming jobs, what you need is one application, okay? And the trick with that application is to be working on it for many months, okay? Like many, many months, ideally three, maybe six months even. The purpose is to add as many features as you can into that application until you kind of run out of ideas. And then the second thing is to refactor the code as you are learning new things. Because maybe you've noticed that as you are getting better at programming, maybe you're, right now you are learning JavaScript, maybe you even try some React, maybe you've tried some of your own React applications, you've noticed that you are getting better as you are building certain features of your application. And then parts of your application that you've started with, they are lacking behind, they're way too easy, and maybe you've, you would have written your code in a different way, in a more readable way, etc., etc. So the point is not to just keep adding features, but to also go back to the first code that you wrote and improve it, okay? Because if you work on something for many months, you'll just naturally get better. It's like, it's impossible to get worse and, or to become more stupid uh, as you're adding to your skill set. Like it's, I think it's impossible. I don't know how you would become worse only by only doing like bad habits, but if you'd be doing, or if, if you'd have a lot of bad habits as you're building more stuff in your application, then that's, gonna kind of stop you from getting better. So you'd have to go anyway back and fix all the bad things you'd have done, right? So in a way, it's almost impossible to get worse as you are getting, uh, as you are adding more on top of your skill set. okay? I guess at some point, yeah, if you don't have feedback and support and like code reviews and stuff like that, you'll get so bad that you'll hit like a roadblock, okay? You'll, you'll hit like a massive, point where you're like, okay, this whole thing is broken because I'm repeating myself. I don't have like simple code, but still when you hit that point, you have to go back. Maybe you have to restart the entire application from scratch using the things that you've been learning so far. But uh, yeah, as I said, add as many features as you can and then go back and rewrite your old code. So the way I do it with my clients is as they are lear learning JavaScript and then they are learning React with the classes and everything. Once they know all those things, API calls, routing, classes, etc., etc., state management, then they start building one application with classes. Then they have to refactor the application using hooks. So now they understand how to use classes and hooks and they wrote the same code twice. So you actually they understand the concept even better because they've, they've done the same thing in a different way. And then they add Redux and then they actually finish the application. So this whole process kind of takes three, to four, maybe even six months, depending on how much time the student actually has. This is like very, very important, right? The amount of time you are spending on something. And I'll give you an example just for you to understand like how important this is. Let's say, let's say you are starting with the basic, the most basic JavaScript to do app. You just add items, click on a button to remove the item, click on a button to toggle something from done to undone. 
Then you are saying, okay, let me add an edit feature. So then you click on the item, then you can edit the text inside the to-do. Then you have, let's say, you're gonna add a search feature. So you are typing in something in another input and then you are only allowing the items that match the text from that second input. And then you can add another feature, which is filter the items based on like the completion status. So if they are done, undone, or you wanna see all then you can uh, filter based on priority you can add a priority feature then you can filter based on or sort based on the date of creation or the date of updates and then you can create like cards out of each item and then inside the card you can add markup you can add other to-do lists maybe you can add comments maybe then you can recreate this entire application in react so now you are learning react on top of that then you can add the backend server then you can create a collaboration feature then you can create a user feature so you can each user can have its own like boards and stuff like that so right now i'm telling you like how trello has been created right from the most basic to do app to like a multi-million dollar company maybe even billion dollar company that's the process you take something very simple and you make it extremely complex because if you break down any multi-million dollar startup they are all kind of revolving around the same themes and concepts this like all applications are using objects arrays maybe images video or a combination of these two or all of them together like youtube arrays objects booleans videos pictures like like this is all it is about it's using the same kind of ingredients to create something new your job is to push the limits of your current knowledge and capabilities and put that in your portfolio and then show it to someone and then if you are good, if you are good, like people will see that and they will recognize potential, uh, maybe talent, maybe hard work, maybe dedication, and, and then you'll get hired. Like this is like the most bare bones that I can make this concept, you know? Like if you are, if you, your portfolio is extremely simple and it has like the most basic applications, yeah, it's gonna be extremely difficult for you to get hired in this competitive job market. But if you just push your skill set to the maximum, right? Then it's just a matter of time until uh, luck meets preparation. It's extremely simple because there are out there people that are looking for someone with that exact skill set that I'm talking about, someone that understands state management, someone that understands uh, data structure, someone that understands routing, someone that understands React, someone that understands why all those things are actually needed in this modern tech world, you know? It's, it's not out of this world what I'm saying and these are the things that I'm actually working on with people in my mentorship program. I wouldn't talk about these things if they wouldn't be the things that I've seen working over and over again. Maybe there are other ways, but from my experience of working with dozens of people and helping them get hired, these are the things that matter the most. These are like the meat and the potatoes. Focusing on CSS animations, that's nice, you know, but that's like the pepper on the steak. You still need a steak at the end of the day. So if you focus your attention on like the simple things, the cherry on top, then you won't be able to make it as a developer. And if you will, you'll be struggling a lot to keep up, even more than you should be. Okay, because your first job is going to be fairly difficult. Uh, I can attest, uh, I can attest that. Okay, so I guess that's the video for today. If you liked it, like it, like this video. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video. If you want to work with me directly, uh, you can apply for a free consultation call and I'll show you exactly what you have to do from your current situation all the way till the point where you get hired. Uh, and I have a six months money back guarantee, so there is literally no risk uh, for you your life is gonna be changed dramatically and you'll have a shit ton of fun while learning this stuff okay uh, you'll experience massive growth in uh, in this journey and i can assure you of that anyway i'll see you in the next one peace